Now, can the Zespri business model work for New Zealand's sheep milking industry? Its former chief executive, Lane Jager, believes it can. Now, if successful, it would transform the industry into a billion dollar industry. It's delivered for its farmers. Um, now, Lane Jager told this to 400 people at a spring sheep milk company's annual open day held very recently on a farm near Cambridge. Joining us now to discuss uh, how the model will play out over uh, sheep milking is Spring Sheep Chief Executive Scotty Chapman joins us on the phone. Evening, Scotty. Good evening, Sarah. Now, um, Lane spoke, and of course, for those not familiar, um, Lane was the former uh, CEO of Zespri for many, many years. Uh, you called Lane up, what, 2015, about how to model the Zespri model. For those who are not aware of what the Zespri business model is, uh, can you just, uh, explain about its attributes? Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I worked for Zespri in the um, mid-90s up in Japan and, and I was um, awesome at that stage as well. And basically what I liked about the model was it was completely quality-based. We could scale supply, but we could control quality with what we were doing. And that meant we got a market premium of about 100% over Chilean kiwi fruit and Italian kiwi fruit and the others. And it was fascinating for me to have a model whereby you could make that much value back for your growers. And um, when we were setting up the sheep milk industry, it began with a conversation around, well, if we were starting with green fields, how could we set this up in a way whereby we could extract real market premiums and make this a scalable category that's interesting to all involved? Yeah, and so the real fundamental of it is the fact that it's about having an, a, a license to supply over a property that goes with the property effectively in the Zespri model? That, that's right. I mean, if, if you look at the Zespri, what it is, uh, Zespri model, what it is is, you know, supply is limited. You make sure you've got more demand than supply. And they can do that by issuing licenses and making sure they only have as much kiwi fruit available as can get very good prices in market. And they can put very strong controls around quality to ensure that the, the consumer gets a, a fantastic experience every time. When we set up this industry, we knew we can do the same model in that let's not get excited. You know, New Zealand has a history of having something going well and then oversupplying. We call it the valley of death, where, you know, farmer-driven industries will put more and more farms down and then wonder why the consumers stop buying. Well, when we set up with a Zespri style model, we knew that we'd make sure demand comes first. And while we're really excited about converting farms from cow dairy back to sheep dairy, well, that's backfilling. And so we get it right in market, we understand what the consumers want, we target consumers, and then we backfill supply to make sure we've got a sustainable business that can scale. Mm, backfill supply, I like that. Um, because the thing is, you've, see, you've said there that sheep milk products um, sat in a hugely valuable niche market, and you do not want to let this go anywhere near commoditization. Do you believe that uh, you have to get in early on um, a product category or to let it apply I mean I'm thinking of the likes of and I know this isn't your specialty but we've seen that uh, happen in the wool industry uh, is, it, is it really about jumping on board and creating something really unique from the start to get that right I think it's a lot easier, Sarah. I mean, I, I am off a sheep and beef farm myself, and I spent time working for New Zealand Merino when I first came back to New Zealand. Um, I, I think if you start with a green field, you can set it up in a way that's scalable. When you've got multiple players, and you know, New Zealanders have a history of competing against each other in market, which is just a sad thing that we do. Um, it, it's a lot harder to take it when you have a clean industry like us that has no footprint. I mean, when we began, we had um, no farms, no infrastructure, no customers, no products, but we had the ability to set up in any way we wanted to work and you know now we've got sort of well, 11 farms supplying into us now and we've got the ability to scale and we've got a model set up that's actually really really scalable you do it in an existing industry and you just don't have that control over quality and that control over volume to enable you to make those changes Mm. The conversions of dairy farms into sheep farms, um, one of the attractions is the lower environmental footprint. But uh, in terms of genetic gains in sheep, are we seeing that on a good trajectory? Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a really, really interesting part of the business and what's fantastic. I mean, if you look at New Zealand, we've got 26 million sheep and um, there's not 20,000 of them are actually dairy sheep. So when we began this business five years ago, it'd be like putting cups on an Angus and expecting to get milk out of them. Um, we went to Europe and bought a lot of embryos and a lot of straws of semen back from the top stud farms around the world. And they're now, well, now they're actually four tooth, so those original ewes. So now we've got a really good range of genetics that we bought in from Europe and our yields are going 
went through the roof. All of a sudden now we have dairy sheep available in New Zealand. And I think you find over the next 5, 10, 20 years, there'll be a lot more of these high-yielding genetic ewes available. And that allows us to set up the equivalent of a, of a Frisian cow, if you like, in the sheep industry. Uh, and I've got a famous saying, um, farmers are more like sheep than sheep, Scotty. And as soon as they see uh, a tremendous amount of value, they're all going to want to get in. Uh, however, you are doing that amazing ability to control supply. What does the next five years look like? And uh, for those who are keen on getting into this particular category, um, what should they be thinking about to ensure their success to be in early? Absolutely, and, you, and you've nailed it in regards to your definition of that. You know, the only way we can make this successful is to ensure we have more demand than supply. The only way we can do that is to make sure we only bring on the number of farmers that we know can make it work over the, you know, the short, medium, and long term. Because when a farmer converts to sheep milk, they've got a 20-year return on their assets. And we've got to look them in their eyes and say, hey, not mm-hmm. just this year or three years or five years from now, we're going to be giving you a competitive return in 20 years as well. And that's the sort of time frame we need to be looking at. Um, if you are interested in converting to sheep milk. In our case, it's the Greater Waikato is the only region that we're in. And we're actually only looking at farmers that are, um, they want a better environmental footprint, but they're also looking at the diversification. You know, then we're not just looking for disgruntled cow farmers, if you like. We're looking for those that really are looking for an edge and want to convert a percentage of their farm across. You know, there'll be some that are doing cow and sheep at the same time on this, on a similar platform. And, and that's really exciting. So um, by all means, if you're interested, come along and jump on our website, Spring Sheep, and, and we'll be able to be in, get in touch with you around that. Scotty, I found it interesting that the fact that you've had an involvement with not only Zespru, but also New Zealand Merino. How do farmers uh, take a look into the banker's eyes uh, for, for the long term and for 20 years and to ensure that the support for these types of niche markets is supported with the capital to go with it? That's a great question, Sarah. I mean, I'd look at it another way. You can only worry about what you can control. Um, if you're in the sheep milking industry and you're a farmer, you control yield. And you just have to know that the partners you're working with, you have to believe in their model and, and believe that, you know, in our case, a Zespri style model is the way to go where you're taking new product development through and creating brands, et cetera. Um, no matter what type of farming you're in, you maximise the bits you can control, and that really is all you can do. So in regards to how the bankers act and how the bureaucrats act, we just can't accept that. What a great piece of advice. We have Mr. Stephen Jacoby up next on the program, Scotty. Uh, what are some of those very strong uh, markets and low-hanging fruit for sheep milk, uh, for particularly in the way we produce it here in New Zealand? Yeah, well, we, um, after a few years of trial and error, we've decided that we're just simply a nutrition product, a dairy nutrition product. And what that means is things like, you know, fresh milk and yogurts, et cetera, we won't be doing. So when you get into nutrition products and probiotics and baby formulas and things like that, um, we're finding our strongest markets are in Asia. So we began in Taiwan. Then we went to Malaysia and Vietnam the next year. Um, now we're also doing China as well and Hong Kong. And um, it's just the range of Asian markets. So for us, let's have five or six markets. Make sure that we're not reliant on only one and a range of nutritional products. And, and that's how we'll be just Asian focused for the next 10, 15 years. That's where we'll be taking it. So you will welcome the new rule book for trade into Asia uh, that has been announced today. I'm not up to speed on that one, to be honest. Oh, that's okay. No worries. Well, you can hang around and have a yarn to Stephen Jacoby, which uh, is looking like we've got some fantastic pathways within to Asia following um, some trade agreements. So, no, sorry to throw you under the bus like that. But, um, of course, it's oh, absolutely fantastic. Anything that opens up space, more than well. <laughs> exactly. It's always a pleasure to catch up with you, Scotty, and congratulations. It's like leaps and bounds every time I speak to somebody from the sheep milking industry. And some absolutely incredibly inspiring um, young professionals coming through the, the, the company as well so congratulations and well done on your direction uh, you can catch the story in this week's Farmers Weekly by Gerald Pickard uh, titled Jager Backs Sheep Milk Industry This is Sarah's Country